Okay. Good afternoon. Welcome to our Facebook Live Lunch and Learn. And um, aren't we 50 today? You can see all three of us. <laughs> we're so excited to be with you all. Um, and we're here today to talk about the future. And we're so excited on this nice, beautiful, sunny day. We're going to be talking about planning for the future, hopefully some outdoor events, maybe a little getaway. And if not, we're also going to talk about stay vacation. So stay tuned for the whole time together because we're going to talk about some really neat stuff that includes um, you as caregivers and your loved ones, okay, and future event planning for the summer. All right. My name is Laura Spradley. I'm with the Arkansas Edu Bariatric Education Collaborative, and we're here at UAMS and the Donald W. Reynolds Institute on Aging, and we collaborate with Alzheimer's Arkansas and Senior Care today. And uh, Carolyn is the outreach coordinator for all of Arkansas. We've seen her before. We collaborate a lot of things together. And we have the honor of having Phil Schmidt with us today from Senior Care. So there you are, Phil. <laughs> you can see oh, yeah. nice the our Thank you. And um, Matt's got us hooked up with all this fancy technology. So we're, we're looking good, aren't we? <laughs> we are. We are. All right. Well, I know they don't want to hear me talk, but we're going to get on with some housekeeping things. Um, I want to thank you all again today for taking the time to be here and to take this important time to learn something new today. The past few weeks and months, actually, have been kind of stressful in a lot of ways, but you're here because you're strong. You're caregivers, so we know you're strong. And together, we're all going to get through this, okay? And we're going to take one day at a time. But for those tuning in on Facebook, we want to make sure you understand that this is just an educational event. It doesn't take the place that you talk to your doctor if you think you have medical concerns that you need to talk to him or her about. So reach out to your physician if you need them. We're also not going to talk about the COVID virus today. So if you could direct those questions or save them for later, Alzheimer's Arkansas is going to have a, a Facebook Live discussion about that. So we're here today just to talk to caregivers about future planning and respite. So uh, without further ado, I think we're ready to get started. Is that okay with y'all, Bill? Let's go. Let's go. All right. Carolyn, my first question is for you in this planning time for the summer. Um, the most important thing is for the caregivers to stay healthy, as, as you preach all the time. So this is your this is your question. Um, how can caregivers maintain their health and be ready for the upcoming summer and events that are coming up? Uh, I think there's nothing new I need to say. You know, <laughs> continue with exercise. Uh, pay attention to your hygiene. You know, eat balanced meals. Get fresh air. It's really important now to get fresh air. Sometimes we're social isolating and uh, it's important still to get outside and get that fresh air and let it in. You know, if you're exercising and you feel like you can't get out, you know, chair exercises, get plenty of sleep as we've already changed into, you know, the, the new hours, the spring hours. Of course, you and your loved one, the, the longer hours make uh, take effect on your health. So make sure you're still getting sleep. Mm -hmm. Stay hydrated. Do some fun things like dance if you can. <laughs> play some, play some of your favorite songs. Uh, you know, it, it's very important now and in the future. Like, find a way to laugh. Uh, it's so important because it just can change the way you feel. Uh, stay. I know our doctor's appointments are being canceled. Our dentist appointments are being canceled, but go ahead and take time to reschedule if possible. Uh, see if they have telehealth appointments if possible, if needed. Uh, just make sure you stay on top of all the things you've always done and really, especially now, stay on top of your mental health and take time to laugh. And, and yeah, keep your immunizations up to date, okay? Yeah, that's an important one, especially with anyone older. We stress that a lot. Yes. If you haven't gotten that flu shot, still get it. Still get it. And, you know, for older people, make sure you get the pneumonia uh, yeah. shot. My uncle who's older, his doctor told him, like, that was one of the most important things to be getting right now is his uh, pneumonia immunization. So, mm -hmm. please. Mm -hmm. And, Carolyn, when you say stay hydrated, do you mean, like, drink that coke? 
<laughs> no, drink water. <laughs> you know, I know we hate it, but you know, we have to drink water, increase your intake. And if you don't like water, uh, try other ways, add fruit to it, you know, cucumbers, lemon. It does not really count as water if it's Diet Coke or liquid. <laughs> so try to take as much water as you can. So challenge yourself if you're not drinking much, you know, go from one bottle to two bottles, you know, tomorrow and just kind of build it up. So do mm -hmm. as much as you can. You can drink your other things. I'm not going to stop you, but uh, <laughs> just add water to your drinks, you know. Which could help with sleep as well, too, because if you're not hydrated, you won't sleep as well. You won't sleep as well. It's a lot of things that happen when you don't, when you're not hydrated. You don't feel as well. Uh, your your mental, your cognitive is not as well. Your body uh, needs water. So it's just important to, to take water in. Yes, it does. Very good. Okay, and then this next question I have is... Um, if we're lucky enough to be able to plan for little uh, getaways in the future, maybe something's uh, going to happen in June or July, a graduation that's been postponed or whatever. I've heard you speak about this before, so I wanted our listeners to hear it. Um, how can they better plan to travel with someone who may have some form of dementia or Alzheimer's? Uh, I think all of us are trying to plan something. I don't know when we're going to get out, but I'm like, okay. Uh, don't tell my boss, but I'm planning for a vacation to go somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, but no, I just said. Yeah, when well, we're thinking about it, like now, I think that's one of the things that we can be optimistic about, and maybe even help with some of our mental health if we're planning something for later in the summer or maybe early fall that we go out and do something that we've always wanted to do and traveling, going somewhere, or visiting someone. So the number one thing I would say, uh, plan ahead and you know your loved ones. So how much time can they handle in the car without a break? So make sure that you have rest breaks, you have meals and you have snacks. Those things are really important. And plan out your trip. Um, make sure that you know the way, you know, where your hotel you're gonna stay if it's uh, a little a little uh, if you're not really familiar with the place so just and letting people know you are leaving when you're expected uh, to come back and you stay in touch with people even on your trip so you know if you're gonna be gone a couple hours some if you somewhere in between there let somebody know how far you've made it uh, just in case things happen and that way someone can have an idea on like where you are uh make sure you always take prescription meds and equipment yeah. uh, any equipment you need uh make sure you have extra supplies like water in the uh, vehicle make sure your spare tire is uh <laughs> i mean i've had that happen to me before yeah. make sure your spare tire is still good mm -hmm. uh, make sure you you have like printed stuff like reservations there's a lot of things we can uh, do to make sure that in our plan that you're trip goes as smooth uh, as possible so and when things don't work out don't sweat over them. like adjust and uh and move on don't make it so stressful it does not have to go you know every step of the way of your plan so if something doesn't work stay calm so your loved one can stay calm and it'll just make out for a better trip so and <laughs> try to keep the same schedule you have at home, the same routine. I know that kind of sounds maybe counterproductive, but if they're waking up at eight, still wake up at eight. If they go to bed at nine, still go to bed at nine. Make sure you keep meals on track as much as possible. Great advice, great advice. And hopefully we all do get to take some little trip here in the future. And Bill, that kind of leads into this next um, topic of discussion that we want caregivers to talk about and learn about today is um, if they get to the point where they feel safe and they want to leave and maybe take a little rest with some caregiving, is it good to start now and when should they start planning? And I, I know this is your area of expertise. Well, thank, thank you, Laura. You know, I cannot underestimate the importance of pre-planning for caregiver respite. Uh, you know, pre-planning, uh, it, is, is good execution. It, 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 it makes things go together much easier. One, for one thing, for the family caregiver, it's really a form of therapy and it's in and of itself. I had a 
family caregiver client tell me the other day, just thinking about a trip that she's looking at taking sometime in August, is therapy for her to be able to map the trip, think about what um, kinds of things that she wants to do. So in and of itself, that's important, but along with, with planning their trip or whether their, their, their respite is going back and planning a garden in the backyard, um, it's always good to begin to identify a caregiver for that period of time. There, there is, um, there, there is some ramp up time on, on being able to find that right person for that right slot, the number of days and being able to make sure that that fit goes together and, and, uh, pre-planning is extremely important. And um, that kind of goes into this next question I've heard before. And how do you, maybe you can explain to us, I've heard that it's good if you can, and if it's possible to include your loved one in picking the person that you're going to bring into your home and, you know, leave them even if it's for two to four hours or a day or two. Um, is that a good idea to include your loved one? I think it's a great idea to include the, the, in the loved one if, if that is, um, if it's workable. And when right. I say workable, sometimes um, the the family respite is going to be um, important for that for the family member to take. So it's I think it's important not to have it be uh, the kind of of meeting where there's a decision being made whether there's going to be a person. I think it's important that 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 loved one knows that there's going to be a person and that any groundwork and foundation that can be laid to make it a real smooth transition is a good thing to do. And of course the caregiver um, needs to learn to what, what, the, what the loved ones likes, wants, needs, and all of those things are. And, um, and, and to be able to maybe pick someone who has possibly been there before is is always the easy way to do it sometimes that's not possible if that's not possible then that time to find the availability with a, a caregiving company such as mine using a company that specializes in finding that right caregiver having them introduced to the family the family um, interacts back and forth making sure everyone's on the same song, proverbial song page, so to speak, with regard to the the kinds of activities that the loved one will want to do and the kinds of things that the family expects to happen in the caregiving, um, in the caregiving experience. It, there's time to be able to work through those kinds of things. You recommend kind of a start small and then do, do an overnight type of experience, like maybe do a couple hours? If, if uh, Yes, if we're looking at, uh, there, there's different ways to look at that. If we're looking at a caregiving type experience where there's going to be a few hours a day and maybe there's other family members that are going to be there some of that time, um, it, it is always good to, to absorb that caregiver into uh, the daily routine with that loved one. Uh, if it's an overnight experience, um, same thing. And whether that involves three or four hours before it happens just to be in the home and be able to get a good download from family members about what's needed. And of course, a company, um, a caregiving company would more than likely um, write a care plan. And a care plan would be you know, emergency numbers and the kinds of things that the loved one likes, likes to smell flowers in the yard, likes to sit on the porch at four in the afternoon, likes to have a, um, a Coca-Cola after they get up from a nap, wants to, um, you know, have uh, plant tomatoes in the backyard. Those kinds of things I think are good. And, and the, if we're looking for extracted periods of time where um, there will be more care needed, then obviously uh, putting that caregiver in there for a little bit more time is important before the actual day of just showing up. Yeah, that's great. Nice to know about that care plan. Sounds wonderful. Very important. Very important. That's, that's, the, 
that's the resource by which caregivers need to be able to go and reference. And we, we really um, work hard to have family members be able to put bullet points in there about the things that make the loved one feel more comfortable being there. The more detail we can go into of just the little idiosyncrasies of the things that they like and want to uh, want to experience during the course of the day and their activities of daily living makes it a very, very good fit. Right. Thank you. Okay. And Carolyn, this is one I've heard you talk about before. The importance okay. of your favorite word, respite. 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 <laughs> um, you know, if you're not comfortable with leaving your loved one, I've heard you, you do a great job of explaining how to just use um, someone to help you out and you get to go in your backyard and do your flowers or whatever it is and have a little staycation right in your own home. So I'm going to let you take it because you do a great job of explaining. That. Thank you, Laura. So the first thing is to reconsider respite to you. Everyone needs a break, but no, it is not possible for everyone to leave for whatever reason. However, that does not mean you can't have a break. So bringing someone into the home so you can uh, maybe go to the grocery store or you pedal around or do some gardening or maybe take a nap. So it, even now, if you have someone that is, I know because of social distancing, we're not really inviting people into our homes. But if you have a loved one that comes often and uh, help you do other things or if there's a couple of you in the house, like somebody take a few minutes to, uh, somebody takes a few minutes to, I thought it was on salary, I'm sorry, America. I'm sorry, America. So uh, <laughs> take, take a few minutes to, uh, to just take a nap. So both of you can take time to get some rest because now even during this time we're staying at home more but we still need to figure out how to get breaks and uh sometimes that break means you know when they take a nap maybe you need to take a nap as well and maybe even consider some of the activities are those activities good for both of you? Because, you know, rest sometimes comes in like, are both of you gonna laugh? Are both of you going to enjoy the activity? So you deserve a break, you need a break. So now try to figure out ways to get that five minute break. And if you can't in the future, can't go on a vacation, if you're not comfortable or can't leave your loved one alone or have someone to come in, figure out, how to get someone else to come in to give you a break while you're home. And that's the best way to take care of yourself. It is. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, Matt, do we have any questions from the audience? We have four really good questions. Okay. okay. Take it away. Let's see. <laughs> All right. This is for Phil. Are in-home care companies still providing care during this time? And if so, how have they adjusted their procedures, policies and procedures to ensure safety, Phil? That is a great question. And yes, um, in-home companies uh, such as mine are absolutely in the thick of things and taking care of loved ones in their home. Our, our, our original mission has always been for people to stay at home and live at home for the rest of their lives, which you know we've always felt like has been the, the safest, happiest, most pleasant place to be. And um, I think that's even exemplified in these times that we're in now, where home is the safe haven. We're very blessed that all, being at home can also mean being outside. And especially as we get into the summer months, this is gonna be a great respite to just be able to be outside in the sunshine and do some things we wanna do. So home is, is is the mission for for companies such as mine and so how things are different now um let me mention how they're the same mm -hmm. one way that they're the same is is that we're always careful when we go into a home environment to make sure that we're well so wellness is everything even before the dreaded v word <laughs> uh, uh, we, we have been very careful to wash and use use um, gloves and 
and um, antiseptic can wash and and more than anything in our company, uh, we are, if there's a sniffle, we go to the doctor and we make sure that uh, we're cleared with the doctor's note and the doctor's checkup to be able to go into that environment. How things have stepped up since then is that our caregivers are very careful to make sure that they themselves are in a sequestered home environment once they leave that loved one's place of uh, where, where they live and that they're not around crowds and that they're watching all of the different precautions such as masks and gloves and, and hand sanitizer and those things that we're using on the job. So um, yes, we are, we are definitely keeping people in their homes. In fact, there's uh, it's now more important than ever and, and it's, and it's more popular than ever. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's see what the next question brings us. And I'll see who this might go to. Uh, do you have any advice on bringing a loved one with dementia to a large gathering, like a wedding or graduation ceremony? Oh, that's right up Carolyn's alley. Please. So my first, I would say, when you think about taking your loved one with dementia into a large crowd or a large celebration is, you know your loved one. So is there really a place that they're going to thrive? Is it going to be too many distractions, too much stimulation? So it's really deciding on if this is going to be the best, because sometimes it's not always the best. And even if it starts out well, there may be something that something that happens that you may uh, need to find, have them a safe haven. So Wherever you take your loved one, even if you feel like I, uh, I know them, they usually fare well around crowds or around a lot of people and stimulation, I would say beforehand, have an exit plan for them because you do not know what's going to trigger something or if they get tired, they need a place of rest. So before you go to a place, make sure that you have a place for them to kind of get away from all the stimulation. So, you know, like if it's a lobby or somewhere you can take them to get rest, if it's in a church, do they have an extra room where maybe they can just sit to themselves and and just figure out a way to make sure that they are comfortable at all times and it doesn't become a distraction to the celebration. So just know your loved one. Uh, you don't force them to be in something that you know that is not going to work. That is probably when you need respite care. And I would say, you know, in advance, if you're going out of town and you know you you are taking them, try to find plan with your loved ones that's out of town, like maybe someone that could pr provide some respite care to them while they're in town, or maybe a family member that's not gonna go somewhere for them to stay during the, the celebration or the event. So there's a couple ways to manage that, but I would say number one is know your loved one. And after a, a long trip, they still may be too tired to even go to a, the event and still have like some issues with it. So. Figure out respite while you're on vacation or at the event if needed and have a place for them to go just in case it's not working the way you plan. Great advice. Thank you, Carolyn. You're welcome. Let's see. Oh, I don't know who wants this one. Any suggestions for safe and fun outdoor summer activities? Oh, we could probably all chime in here, but anyway. we could probably, so safe and fun. I think that always goes back to knowing the person, right? So <laughs> some things are safe for some people or not safe for other people. You know, you have to think about the gate, like how, how well they walk, uh, what the terrain looks like outside. Uh, just a lot of things when you assess what safe means, because what's safe for one person is not safe for another. However, sometimes I think we put too much effort into what uh, what an activity is. You know, an activity actually could be sitting on the porch watching the birds or the kids play. So uh, a lot of seniors, even I enjoy like the outdoors and sometimes just sitting outside is a great activity. Uh, you can you can garden and you know there are great ways to garden you can do it in pots and you can just go by potting soil and seeds and you don't have to do it in the ground so you can do it at a table so that's usually safe um 
you know, paint a paint something, paint a birdhouse or hang a wind chime. So there's a lot of things we can do outside, but we have to assess for each individual what safe looks like. What do you think, Phil? I think this, I, I agree wholeheartedly, Carolyn. And I, I think it also goes back to the pre-planning, being able yes. to have a really good plan where the family lists and, and the loved one lists the different things that they love to do. And I want to emphasize um, not to overdo it, you know, not to try to pack all the activities into one day. I know that sometimes, um, and this is, this is if everything's safe and the environment's safe, is going to the grocery store with a, or, or, the, or the farmer's market with um, a, a caregiver and just being able to look at the corn and tomatoes and okra and you, you could spend three or four hours going through and doing things like that. Mm -hmm. Plus you're getting fresh air and exercise mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Or grandkids coming over, playing in the backyard while um, the loved one is out there with them for a little while. Not to bunch too much at one time, but to try mm -hmm. to center around some activity that um, that they can do for that day, and and um, it it makes for a real uh, variety of of different interests. I think that's true, Phil. Just to uh, piggyback on that is not putting too many activities in one day. I think you know believing some people believe like they have nine, they need to be doing something. Ten, they need to be doing that's something. Right. Sometimes. If we have not learned anything, well, I have in uh, we're in our current state is like nothing is doing something, and there is nothing wrong with just taking a breather every now and then. So, don't fill up your loved one with like these num with number and number of activities, and then you get frustrated because they don't want to participate or they're tired and. There's a lot of issues. So figure out it. some with some people, it's one activity a day. Some can handle maybe two or three short ones. So just don't try to fill up their schedule because, you know, of, you know Carolyn, you know, to, to that point, too, it's 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 overstimulation. And that's one of the yes, things it that, is. one of the things that I, I try to to really I'm pre emphasize with my with my clients, families is, is that caregiving is not action every minute. You know, no, caregiving not. is, is bonding. It's, it's, it's having that bonding experience with someone that they come to know and trust that knows and can prejudge what their needs and wants are. And sometimes that just takes some quiet retrospect and getting to know each other when there's nothing going on. And that's really what makes for good companionships, in, in my opinion, and makes yes. it much, much more solid than feeling like there has to be unlimited activity. So Exactly. Exactly. Great answers, y'all. Great. Matt, anything else for us? One more. <laughs> okay. All right. And this is from Amanda. When hiring a respite caregiver, what are some questions to ask the potential provider? Okay, Phil. That is a great question. Thank you, Amanda. The, I think the most important thing in the world is to ask, you know, tell me about your process. You know, Mr. or Mrs. Provider, tell me about your process. Where do you get your caregivers? How do you get your caregivers? Um, what do you expect of your caregivers? What standards do you have for your caregivers? I can give you a, for instance, you know, I hire and recruit my caregivers. I make sure that they come from um, experience and come from a place where they have experience in, in the kind of care that they're going to be providing. Um, I want to make sure that um, obviously the, the standard things that most companies do by going through background checks and those kinds of things, you want to ask that. And you want to find out if they have, if these companies have insurance, if they have, you know, workers' compensation insurance and liability insurance. It's 
It's not always about how much it is per hour and everything. It's about whether it's apples to apples. When you're looking at shopping for a caregiving company, what makes one different than the other? I think the most important thing, though, is do the, do the, the skills that they have for the person that will be with your loved one match the needs that your loved one has and the experience is there that they absolutely um, will, will be effective. Well, good answer. I think I'm about to add to that is to question your provider about how easy is it to get a new caregiver. And the reason I say that is I get calls and a lot of times it's not that uh, the caregiver has done anything wrong, They're, they are just not a match. So you may have to go through a couple of caregivers or two or three or five to find somebody that is the correct match for your loved one. So make sure that the provider is willing to work with you on that. Uh, also, don't be afraid to uh, advocate for yourself because any good provider is going to listen to your challenges and your problems or whatever that's coming along. So if you feel like they're not, well, that may be a time to you know change providers. So advocate for yourself and your loved one and make sure that they are willing to work with you to make sure that your loved one needs are taken care of. Car uh, Carolyn and I can piggyback off each other all day long as far as <laughs> yes, we can. Okay, things, it kind of goes, she and I are on the same page. And I think yes. another great thing to ask is, is to ask if there's going to be multiple caregivers, if it's a job exactly. that does not require, you know, inordinate amount of hours per week where there would need to be changes in personnel there should be that same consistent caregiver exactly. coming to bond and build a relationship with your loved one. And, and, and it states your, your importance in your mind for wanting that to happen without yes. having a different face every time the doorbell rings. There are exactly. some services that are able to provide that, and there's some services that don't provide that at all. Be very wary of that kind of thing because especially in what we're working and talking about here um, in dealing with some forms of Alzheimer's or dementia, it's important to have that same consistent kind of schedule and face each and every day. Yes, Phil, you're right. Very good. Okay, thank y'all. Matt, anything else? No more questions. Okay, well, I have one for Carolyn. You ready, Carolyn? <laughs> I hope okay. so. Let's see. This is my favorite question because we all just love this about all the time Arkansas. I want you to tell the audience about all the great grants that y'all offer to our wonderful caregivers. And it's just phenomenal what y'all do. So I want to end with that because it's just so great. So first off, we are still providing the services that we provided before. Uh, no, we can't do the events. However, we are still providing grants. We do have the Family Assistant Program grant that is a $350 grant that can be used for a multiple of reasons, uh, including respite care. And it's, we provide that across the state of Arkansas. Your loved one has to have a dementia uh, Alzheimer's, you know, uh, frontal tubal dementia, any, any of the dementia. So we do have that. You can always check our Facebook page at alzark.org and uh, all of the grants that we have available will be on those. When you uh, go on to our homepage, we do have COVID information on there, which lists our lunch and learns for the next couple of weeks for the month. We will have, it will be updated for May shortly. Uh, we do have a resource tab, so you can easily call us if you need information about finding a provider, helping you uh, just through this difficult time. If you need any kind of resources, we are still answering the phones, answering emails. We do have uh, hopes lined up for June. We're crossing our fingers that uh, we will be relieved from the COVID by June. So we do have a hot springs hope, June the 12th. 
Our Little Rock Hope was rescheduled to do the June the 26th. That information can be found on our website as well. And next week we have uh, Kathleen Purcell with Senior Medicaid Patrol. And she's gonna be talking about Medicare fraud and some other things going on. It's gonna be Monday, April the 20th because uh, just because we are at home, the scammers are at home working hard as well to, to try to scam us through uh, through different, different entities. So we need to uh, hear about that. So respite grants are still available. Contact our office. We, if you can't print it out, we will surely mail you one out. So anything you need, we are still here. So right. I think it will do it. Uh, for okay. me, I don't have anything else. Yeah. So you said next week on the 20th. Monday the 20th, same time at noon. OK. And that's going to be about medical. Medicare fraud, health fraud, uh, just, and I don't know, she probably has some updates because, you know, people are always trying to fraud and I know there's some new ones out there just that comes along with the COVID-19, so. Yeah, um, okay. And then you, you also mentioned earlier, I think I heard you say something about one on the 29th. Oh, on the 29th, I'm gonna let Matt voice over me because okay. he knows her name. Next, uh, the 29th, our Lunch and Learn is going to be about COVID-19, so may I take over? Yes, and we'll have a guest, um, Dr. Sydney Crawley. She has her PhD in microbiology and virology. Um, so she's got some really good information, uh, one, about COVID-19 and kind of where it is now, the um, current signs and symptoms, and then also how it may impact those with dementia. Okay. So it's going to be a good one, so don't miss it. All righty. Well, I really appreciate you all, and um, it's been fun again. And uh, we, yes. nice being here again. Thank you. Yeah, we look forward to doing. It's so good to see you all. I'm so excited. You. It is. We want to get back to seeing our caregivers, though, don't we? We all miss them. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, Carolyn and Phil. I want to just wrap up. But this program was sponsored by Alzheimer's Arkansas, as you can see on the screen, and. They do a lot of planning and putting thought into these programs, and I'm happy to be included, as I know Phil is as, as well. Um, we want to thank y'all for tuning in. And please, as Carolyn said, you can check out the Alzheimer's Arkansas website, um, and you can also check out the AGEC UAMS website, which is agec.uams.edu. And Phil, what is your website? It's uh, www.inhomeseniorcare.com. Thank you. I failed to get that beforehand. Okay. Well, stay connected with us and look at our Facebooks uh, for all of us. And we'll all stay connected during this time and stay strong, right? Thank stay you. Strong. Stay, 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 stay strong. That's right. Goodbye. Goodbye.